Hello everybody, you're here with Claru Beauty with your host Claudia Lara. Thank you very much for tuning in. So today I'm very excited and nervous about this video. Uh, surprising, it's very surprising. You guys, many of you requested since I started the channel two months ago uh, to talk about foundations. And I have to say the truth, I've been threading, what is it, threading, procrastinating, pushing, resisting, <laughs> doing this video because believe it or not it's a little bit complex i'm going to try to make it very simple but it's complex hmm here i am thinking right <laughs> of what's coming um now why is it complex so let me first of all i created a video that precedes the foundation. And to me, I think it's very important. It's about primers and illuminators. So uh, if you want after this or before this, you know, watch that video. Um, no, after this, it's okay. Uh, but it's important uh, to take a note of that because I believe for foundations is as important to look good, it's as important your skincare and your primer. Or illuminator that you put under it. I think that makes a huge difference. So needless to say, um, you know, uh, ex explori exploriating, ex here I am again with the words, um, exfoliating, which I don't do much because my skin is very dry to begin with, but uh, a good cleansing um, or an exfoliating mask, or in my case, hydrating mask, or anything like that definitely helps if you have a special event. Um, and I tell you these things, but I'm not the most disciplined. I don't do them enough or when I need to, but I do know that it makes a big difference, especially, for example, if you go into the counter of a store with a meeting or, you know, and they do your makeup the correct way, they usually exfoliate cleanse and then put a moisturizing mask or something before doing the whole makeup and whoa I get out of there saying my goodness gracious what a difference right so it does it, it is as important and then of course what you do as a primary illuminator you can watch the video on that of the different things that uh, you can do depending on what you need and so here we go with the foundations. We're gonna start with that and I'll give you all these different separate sections, right? Because it depends on what you want. Uh, before I do that, well, first, let me ask you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that. I wanna include this in the beginning more or less of every video so I don't forget. Um, so if you might, please subscribe to my channel, put the, you know, ring the bell on the right-hand side of your screen and um, all right, so that was a little commercial, let's continue. So I just wanna say uh, for my skin, I have very dry skin, like very dry skin. When I go to the counters, I always say, whoa, your skin is so dry. Yes, I know, oh no. They say it as if we didn't know, right? We, we know, if you have an oily normal, whatever your circumstances, you know, <laughs> or most of us. I mean, after a certain age, you sort of know. So very dry skin. Um, yes, I don't drink enough water or maybe it's just the way it is. It's always been the case. Now, even though my skin is very dry, it doesn't look like dull and dry most of the time. It just looks normal, uh, but I can feel it. I can feel that it's dry. And of course, when I apply makeup, it does show. So I do have to be careful with that. Now, what I have found is that there's a difference between having very dry skin prone to acne or just having very dry skin uh, and sensitive skin. I find this big difference in applying makeup because if you are prone to acne, uh, you can sustain certain foundations a little better. Uh, they don't look as dry when you put them on, they look very nice and I will mention some of those. For me, I have to be careful of looking extra dryness which will emphasize not only the dryness but my wrinkles and um, what's the second thing I have? I have this, yes, I remember now, the sensitivity. I get red. Now, usually it doesn't matter because the foundation actually covers that sensitivity, but my sensitivity, but my skin starts getting redder, I mean, uh, like in, on fire. So I might get itchy or I might get, uh, like I wanna get out of the foundation to begin with. 
So I have to be careful about those things. And a lot of foundations do irritate me quite often. And so I have to keep that in mind. So if that's not your case, there's some foundations that you probably can't wear that is gonna look amazing and beautiful on you. And I just don't because I can't stand them, right? So there you go. And of course it makes a big difference if you have oily skin uh, or normal or whatever your needs are. Now, um, I will recommend one that I know and I have heard from many, many, many people that have normal to oily skin. Uh, the foundation is Still Louder Double Wear. I've heard wonderful things. I've seen wonderful things that that foundation does. So if you have normal to oily skin, try that foundation. It just looks amazing and it works wonders and it looks radiant and it covers light to medium to, it is more matte. Um, so you can use the primer underline tricks that I show in the other video to, to you know, contrast that matte looking. But I think you can look very glowy or highlighted or illuminated or, or healthy skin um, with that foundation. So I really recommend it. Now for me, when I wear it, I feel like somebody put like something stretching my skin and on the sensitivity side, not on the looks, I, I, I just want it off. Uh, so I do feel that it stretches my skin a little too much. Um, so for those normal to oily, that's wonderful. It looks, you know, and also you don't have to worry throughout the day about looking oily or glowy and it's long lasting. So I can say enough good things about that foundation, but I don't use it, of course. I have used it, but I don't own it anymore. Okay, the other thing uh, um, I wanna mention, I, I will mention a couple of foundations that I have used and the reasons why I like and don't like. And I will also um, uh, mention some that I would repurchase at some time. It's just I have too many. And FYI, uh, when you guys requested this video, I started every day to using a different foundation. That was with the hope that if you wanna see what they look like, and I started putting them from bare skin, so you see the application and you see how the look ended up um, looking. So that's a plus, and I will list those videos below. So if you see a name of a foundation, you wanna see how it looks on me, well, there you have it, you'll see it. Um, but I will tell you what I feel about each at this video. I hope it doesn't become very long. Um, so I wanted to say those things. All right, so how can we divide foundations? The way I divide them to begin with is if we want an everyday look, if we want a casual look, what's the difference between everyday and casual? Everyday is I'm gonna stay home all day and I just wanna do something so I feel better. <laughs> um, every, that's, uh, you know, every day. Casual is, you know, if I, I'm okay with somebody showing up at my door or uh, going to a store or everything like that, uh, to me, it's more like a casual look. Um, and then a more formal, that would mean, um, well, I guess medium formal. Let's put another category there. You know, when I have a lunch and I have a dinner I'm, or I'm gonna go in a meeting, it could be a work meeting, it could be just social, uh, showing up in a social setting, but there's gonna be many people, it's not just a close group of friends or just one person. Then there's that. And then there's a more formal. Now it's an invitation, you're a guest, you're going somewhere, a little full makeup on, that's formal. And then there's the super formal. And I would put that category when you are going to a wedding or you're part of the wedding or, you know, that most of the bridesmaids or the mother of the, you know, when you really are made out. And that takes another level of makeup and setting. So it stays in place and things like that. So that, those are like the five categories. And I'll tell you very easy the ones I choose and, and the reasons, right? So um, the other thing you have to be careful or notice is what you're gonna put on top of the foundation. I mean, are you gonna use creams? Are you gonna use uh, powders? Are you gonna use a setting powder and, and a setting spray? Those two things make a huge difference in my view. Um, so I'll take that in mind when I mention 
the foundations. Um, so having said that, now another category that I want you to have in mind, and then I'm gonna start mentioning the foundation. Sorry making this so long intro, but um, it's not really intro. I think th these are the things that you need to think about. And uh, one of the reasons why I was resisting making this video and why I say it's complex, because yes, I can tell you the foundations, but if you're not understanding what each does or how they work, um, um, then how would you choose the best for you? Because you, you cannot skip looking for the best for you. You can hear all the recommendations, you can go and try them, but um, all right, so I'm gonna tell you the other uh, categories. Um, well, I, I do have to say, uh, this is one of the reasons I never expected the, the interest in this video because foundation to me is one of those things that, you know, I don't feel, it look, feel like going and trying all these kind of foundations or looking for a foundation. And then, you know, it's kind of like going underwater. Okay, I'll go and find it. And once I do, it's kind of like I want to let it go and just use that one. I'm loyal to what I found and what I like and stay there. And then here and there, I turn new ones. That's how I got to have now a a lot of them, right? Because you're still trying for that one, even though you sort of have one. But I can't um, emphasize enough, you will have to do that for yourself, at least to some extent, at least between two or three. And you can't skip that. It doesn't matter how much I say, which are the favorites. Um, all right, so moving on. And I was gonna say, so, oh yes, this is a very important part. Um, color of the foundation. Now everybody talks about you, you have to match your skin, but I'll tell you why this is uh, extremely important amongst brands. Because you can find the perfect foundation, but if the brand doesn't have a, a color match close to your liking, it won't matter how good the foundation is. It just won't matter. For example, I like foundations that are more in the cooler tone. They they help me look more radiant, more snow white. <laughs> I guess that's how I grew up and they used to like the contrast between my black hair. I used to have black hair, um, my blue eyes and my white. And that cooler tone always made me feel more porcelain-like. Also, as I grew older, I became a little more yellowish. So when I find these cooler tones, I feel younger because it reminds me of a younger self. Um, and so for me, those foundations that give me a warmer look, a uh, more yellowish look, which is supposed to look better. And sometimes I get more compliments in that way because the trend now is that warmer suntan, um, you know, especially Charlotte Tilbury or like, you know, Jennifer Lopez and, and the Kardashians that came with a little more toner, you know, warmer uh, sort of skin tone. So all of those strands um, tend for that more yellowish look. But for me, I like a more cooler tone. And last, 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 because I already talked about the importance of you matching your color and that will also take care of which one is right for you. Um, I want to tell you what I have on and, and, and for you to notice if there's a difference. I have a foundation on this side and a different foundation on this side. And there will be uh, two of my favorite foundations. Uh, so I will tell you which, but look at the size and tell me what you like and what you see difference. And you can notice for yourself and then see if you agree with me at the end. Uh, and if you want to see how I created this look, I have a video for it. I will list it down below and it will be very nice because I apply the foundation from scratch, from bare skin, which you know I don't necessarily love, but also um, everything that I have on. So you see, you know, what I'm wearing, which by the way is mostly this palette benefit. Yes, not luxury makeup perhaps, it's not also it's not drugstore makeup, but I really wanted to try it and I'll explain why there. Anyhow, I also have a Rare Beauty New Concealer. I wanted to try it. So I do have the same on both eyes. You can see and check it out and see if you like it. All right, so now let's move in to the core of why we're here. Holy moly, there's so many. So 
And again, if you start looking at my videos when I first started YouTube, which is October 16 and on, uh, you'll see I use a different one every look. So if you want to go and check out and play in that, in that scenario. So let's start with what I use most of the time and what are my favorites. So we're going to go in the categories of everyday, casual, semi-formal, etc. right? So every day, every day I wake up and if I'm going to be around the house and I just look at myself, I want to do better. Of course, one of my favorite is Westman Atelier. You hear me talk about it all the time and you'll continue hearing me talk about it all the time because I want to do more of those casual looks that I enjoy and do. So let me see if I have it here, one of them. And you can look at my videos in more extent about the swatches. And I have uh, one that has all the swatches. But what I'm talking about is Westman Atelier Foundation Sticks. They come like this. And um, Westman Atelier recommends that you use at least two colors in combination. But this is a very natural look. Now, natural, it covers a little bit of my under eyes, not as good as this, but a little bit of the redness, it just enhances a little bit, but it's not like I look radiant or younger or, you know, anything like that. You can see the videos. Yes, I look much better, of course. It's my makeup, right? Well, I think, at least I think I do. <laughs> I had to tell you a quick story. I was in an event and I used to go to that event. It was a book thing. And I used to go all the time and I usually would wear a very natural everyday look. Oh no, the casual, the next one is coming. And, uh, and then one day I was presenting something and uh, I did, you know, what I thought it was a fuller, formal makeup, which looked like I was made up, right? All the other ones very casual. And uh, there was one or two people that came, but specifically one that said, you know, I love your makeup today. It looks very lovely. But I also, she said also, she didn't say I much prefer. <laughs> she said, but I seen you with that makeup and, and you look beautiful uh, or stunning. She said something like that, which yes, I was not completely bare skin then either, uh, but I was doing the casual, which I will talk about. <laughs> But it looks like you're not wearing makeup. And I mean, or at least that you didn't try much or very little or whatever. So the Westman Atelier is a little less than that because um, I would not have gone to these events and whatever just with Westman Atelier. Maybe, maybe. But no, Westman Atelier is just every day. You're not really going to a social anything. I mean, yeah, if you're going shopping, yeah, of course. But, um, you know, little daily errands. That's why I call it every day. So to me, that is my favorite Westman Atelier. Uh, now, if it's gonna be, I said, so that's every day. If I'm gonna do a casual, uh, a casual day, and now I meant somebody might come to your door or more, more I'm going somewhere like in this event, it's unnoticed, you're not gonna meet anywhere, but you're socially out, right? Um, so now, this is interesting because I, I'm gonna mention the three that I, so there's a Tom Ford stick. This foundation is so easy. So, um, you know, you can travel with. The issue I have with this one, if I can say it's an issue, but it's one of my favorite tools, is too radiant. It's too light and happy. And so that will not make it very natural looking, right? Because you just radiant so you will look like you're wearing makeup but a nice makeup um so it doesn't look like skin like exactly but but it's skin like this is very very light but it's very radiant i wouldn't say glowy because i see glowy in a different category radiant so i have to be in the mood for this uh most likely i will use a cream blush with it um so, but this is another huge favorite. Um, I could use this one also uh, retouching. So let's say I do a full makeup, like right now, right? I, I have makeup on and then I start looking dull or it starts coming down. So I would take a brush, do it a little bit here and just kind of retouch the center and to the sides. And that will really refresh my look. Um, because of the radiance this A has on. So I think I would use it more that way. 
than you know choosing it for bare and just utilizing it the other one i would use in the same category as sort of refreshing fixing adding will be the Cle de Paul. Uh, this is the uh, Radiant Cream to Powder Foundation. I use the O10. So these two are lovely. I really recommend it, casual. And even uh, the next one, semi-formal, uh, yeah. Uh, it's just that I wouldn't do more semi-formal, you know, like meeting people over and whatever. I'll, I'll get to that next step. But I wouldn't just use this one on those because I wouldn't trust the long lasting. They do long last, but they, they move a little bit, I think. They're a little more wetter, if that makes sense. That's why I like them as a retouch. Um, but, you know, if you wake up and you just want to do an everyday real quick, just cover certain things and, and that will give you some radiant uh, look, you can do that, you know, like... If I wanted to look a little more radiant than the West Atelier, I would do this. Perhaps I would do some West Atelier and then add one or the other, you know, just a little bit. It will make me very radiant and, and, and um, you know, glow, not glowy. I, I, I have the image of glowy, it's something different, but um, so yeah, so this three, um, very recommended, Clé de Paul. Uh, radiant cream to powder and the Tom Ford stick. I have it in porcelain 0.5 and I have this in 0 10. So um, I like those. Now with those, I most likely wouldn't put a setting uh, powder because those are radiant creamy, uh, you know, skin looks glowy. Yeah, I guess glowy, <laughs> but just healthy, healthy glowing. Oh, and that note, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, I have tried the, that's very big and it's, it's very nice and it's very expensive. I think it's $250. I did have it at some point, which is the Claire de Pau D foundation. It comes in a jar like this. So it's wet and you have to screw it and touch it. You use very tiny little bits just here and there. And your looks, your skin looks amazing, you know, like just beautiful skin radiant youthful skin i did not like it because sometimes it's too radiant too perfect to to me it i didn't feel like you know like yeah i'm not wearing makeup no i felt like i was wearing makeup which that has to do with personality there's some people and it, there's no right or wrong but there's some personality that want to look like they created a makeup look in my case, I want to look like I didn't try that much. I just enhanced a little bit. Um, you can't really tell like if I did my makeup right or not. You know, it's sort of, you just look pretty. I don't know if that explains my look, but <laughs> that's more what I look. Because sometimes I see women, oh my God, their makeup is perfect. But you, you can tell they're wearing perfect makeup. I, I don't like those looks. So that, the foundation created those looks. Now, the only issue I see with that is very moisturizing is, is that, um, that it looks a little wet and probably you feel it. So you feel it on top of your skin. So I feel that it could move or you have to be careful. Uh, you can set it, but to me, again, with the dry skin and the setting, and probably if you have oily skin, that will be a little issue. You know, you might want to really, really set it. It might got extra glowy through the day. So again, Mm, it's awesome, but for some reason I'm not repurchasing yet. So I, I prefer these other ones that I will be talking about, but it's a very good foundation, still top notch. Uh, and it's not because it's expensive because there's many others that are expensive and I wouldn't repurchase or purchase them now. So, but that one is worth mentioning. Let's say an honor mentioning because of the radiance that it brings. I find that the cream to powder one uh, creates sort of that radiance. And that's why I love, this is love, love this one. I mean, look, you can see that I have used it quite a bit and probably will be repurchasing. You see the tint? Yeah. So this one is something um, I do pull out often. All right, move on. So we did the everyday, we did the casual. 
So now the semi-casual, which means you were invited to a lunch and a social event during the day, it could be a night, but mostly during the day. And I do want to look like I did something, not just I put little here's and there. Uh, right now, one of my favorites and it's been for years has, is the, of course, Dior Forever. Now, Dior Forever reformulated their formula not too long ago. I mean, not too long ago, two years or three years, so something like that. So it's not the same as I used to uh, love. Uh, this one is, is good. It's very similar and obviously it's still one of favorites. Uh, but after they reformulated, I think I prefer the Forever, but the Dior Backstage. Uh, foundation that they created for Sephora. And so with those, I don't have the full bottle. I do have the, so the one I'm talking that they reformulating is the Forever Dior. And I do have it and you can see I am down here. So this is, this is, it was a to go. Um, but I am preferring the, the Sephora backstage and I only have it in this small little pot. Uh, I don't remember if it's, different gifts or sets or whatever. You know, I'm big on that, but I still have plenty of this. I use one and, and with the Dior, I do recommend their primer. So I have the backstage primer that goes with it, but um, I also have, so, but for the forever, I use with this uh, primer, this is mattifying a little bit, but it makes it so long lasting. And I started using this because it has an SPF. Uh, this Dior Forever also has an SPF of 30, so that would have taken care of that step for me or that protection for me. So, um, so I do like this combo. Now, but again, I'm preferring the backstage nowadays because for some reason, I think because I got older, uh, my skin got... I, I don't think my skin is drier than before, but when I apply makeup, it looks drier. So the Backstay uh, Forever, I feel it makes it a little less. And nowadays I am preferring, you know, I, I put a little bit of the two, the tone four, this a little bit on top just to not make it so drying so it can look a little more radiant. So I'm starting to put just a tiny bit on that sense. Uh, so in the same category, I will put the Lisa Eldridge, the new one, the foundation. You heard me talk about it in my channel and I love it. Now, what is the big difference in which one I, ch I would choose? And this is very interesting because you know this is new to my collection and I was trying it out. So the Lisa Eldridge foundation is beautiful, beautiful for video, for pictures, for being like flawless and being like a doll and just looking pretty. Uh, it reminds me a lot of her. If you see all her videos and everything, she's very, uh, lack of word, proper, you know, always beautiful and radiant and, and, and she's very meticulous. The foundation is like that. It's just beautiful that way. So I do enjoy it quite a bit. Um, but it is a little ashy. I mean, I'm scared to even use that word. Um, so I do see the grayish, which is the grayish, which is what makes it a little subdued and mysterious and interesting and that beautiful look that goes perfect with the, with the lipsticks, the velvet lipsticks. So there's all of that. Uh, but the other day I took it out for a lunch and that I, that I attended and I was feeling a little ashy you know, because I am that sensitive that, that those things matter to me. I mean, mo probably most people didn't notice and it's great and you look great in pictures. But to me, I don't feel that, ooh, I still look fresh and, and nice. Um, very subtle, very subtle difference. But if I'm getting ready today, for example, I probably will use the Forever Backstage Dior, which is one of my all time favorites for that reason. So there you have it. Now, um, in the list, I don't know. Well, no, I'll, I'll say all my thoughts on the list of foundations that I have tried because right now I'm giving you sort of my favorites per category. So that will be more or less the, uh, so 
The category of semi-formal, the one going out and, and getting social and, and all of this, will be the forever backstage. The Lisa Eldred, if it's a short one, <laughs> that I can just a couple of hours, but if it's gonna be several hours, I would probably use the forever, uh, the backstage. Okay, so there's Lisa Eldred for a back, uh, forever backstage Dior. And then of course the third one, uh, which is my favorite at this moment will be the uh, Surat Drew Drop Foundation in number three. So that will be most likely what I will go for is more on the cooler side. It reminds me a lot of the Lisa Eldridge number five, which I bought the number seven. Uh, maybe the number five, I will feel a little uh, better in the ashy side that I just mentioned, just because it's cooler side. So right now the Surat will bring that more radiance and cooler side for me, or the forever, um, the Dior forever backstage. I'm repeating myself with that one over and over and over again. <laughs> but that one is the most neutral in what way that I can make it more radiant and illuminating according to the primer and things I use under it, or I can enhance it according to the blush I use, the highlighter I use, thing, you know, the whole look that I, that I use, or I can mattify it and, and make it more subtle. So to me, it's the most versatile or the easier that I can manipulate and use. Now, having said that, those that I'm mentioning, I mention them because they're also comfortable in my skin and I can have them on for a couple of hours because there's many other foundations that when you apply them, they look beautiful, worthwhile. However, I wanna take them off after an hour of use. So I'm not gonna go and mention uh, many of those, but the ones I am mentioning is because I, I, can, I can live with them. I can live in them. <laughs> I can wear them. All right, so moving on. I'm hoping I'm not forgetting some in there because I hate having to go back after, but. All right, so now we're going to a little more formal. Now for a little more formal, one of my favorite, and that's the one I would go for, is of course, and you heard this other YouTubers, is La Mer. La Mer, uh, the Soft Fluid Long Wear Foundation. Why? Because of the long wear and because uh, how it looks and because I don't feel it in my skin and because it's like the Dior that I was telling you about, is very usable and moldable. You can, depending on the primer and, and illuminating or the products you put on top, you can really do many things and it won't disturb the rest of it. Because if you go back to the Tone 4 or the Clé de Peau, they have a little more radiance it's very hard to then want to mattify or want it less or want a more subtle look. It's very hard. So because I'm changed my mind as I'm putting the makeup or things like that, I'm not a makeup artist that you have it all in your head before starting, then that's why I prefer La Mer or uh, the Dior because they are a lot more user-friendly per se. Now, um, in that sense, one that I do want to mention that I don't own, but I have had it, which I love for uh, formal looks, especially if you're going to go out at night or and they're good for pictures and things like that, is the NARS. Now, let me see if I wrote down. Yeah, there is the NARS Natural Radiant and the NARS Sheer Flow. They're both spectacular. I might get one of those soon even though i don't really have a lot of parties to go to but those two uh they're very beautiful and i'm talking more for formal going out you know i'm doing a full makeup look it's not gonna be everyday or casual or semi-casual you know it's more i'm gonna look good and apply makeup to myself so full makeup or i want it to look like full makeup those two i really like the cheer flow makes you a lot more radiant. And it's not the same radiance as this one. This is a more natural kind of glowing from within, but really glowing. <laughs> um, and you can see the videos I did of those. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not. They look natural, but radiant. No, this sheer glow, you, you go for that look. So 
uh, again, one of those things that to mattify it or to try to change the look, it will be hmm, a little more difficult. And then the NARS Natural Radiant is a little more uh, user-friendly in that way. You could, it's a little less glowy. So, um, I don't know. I probably, if I will get one, I probably will get the NARS Natural Radiant. Um, but I really recommend them. All right, so moving on. That was the formal. And the super, super formal. Um, I will have the same. I will have the same. I would just use um, a little more of it, probably La Mer, and, uh, and just set it uh, with the setting powder and then put maybe some meteorites to, to make a little more radiant glowiness, smoothness, and then the setting spray. So I think I would stick with the same. Um, yeah. So now, now that I said my favorites in the categories, the one I will use, and actually I will declutter a lot of the other ones because there's no reason to use them. But I do want to mention my thoughts because I did wear them and I want to tell you what I thought, including, for example, for example, so I have the Sulima Chanel. Um, I don't really like it. I mean, it's terrible. They say it has a skincare pro uh, properties and all of this. I really tried to like it. I really did. And I have some O10 and I have this O20. I always thought it was the color because this is O20. I thought it was a little darker, but then I have the O10 is a little lighter. So sure, um, the color, neither, I think it works for me. So I could blame it on that. But when I wear this foundation, and this one was expensive, it's not inexpensive. When I wear this foundation, I want to take it off half an hour later. It itches, I just feel uncomfortable. I don't think it does much for my skin. I think I see the wrinkles. I feel like an older woman, you know, with a very fancy makeup, because I think that makes me look younger. But it doesn't. It doesn't, you know, there's some makeup that you feel better. You don't really look better, but you feel better when you put it on. And then there's some makeup that actually makes you look better, but it's very uncomfortable. Same as clothing, right? And so you pay the price, that's what they say. You pay the price for beauty because it just makes you look beautiful and, and so you're uncomfortable because of it. Of course, the ultimate is that you find both, right? But this one it doesn't do either. I'm uncomfortable by it and it doesn't make me feel that I feel better and it doesn't do anything. So terrible, right? I mean, I don't want to put it down. Maybe you have it and you like it. Again, remember what I said at the beginning. Foundation is a very personal thing. It's kind of like fragrance, right? Um, somebody loves one fragrance, somebody doesn't. Some fragrances smell delicious in one person and they don't smell nothing like it in another person so i don't i don't you know if you have certain foundations and you disagree with my thoughts um that's fine that's great i, I want to hear about it i, I want to learn so bring it on all right moving on uh other mentions that i have tried and i like so let's start with chanel since i started bashing this one right although i don't think the rest was any much better <laughs> okay, I will end with the one I do like from Chanel. So I don't like this expensive. Uh, this would be for formal wear for every day. Uh, I don't know who. All right, enough of that one, right? <laughs> How do I get out of that one? All right, so I did wanted to mention several of the Chanel. So a big mention in YouTube, and there's a lot of people that love it. And when I tried it, oh my God, the lady at the counter said, this is gonna be the thing. And that is the Chanel Le Beige Water French Tint. You know what I'm talking about? It's a little square. It looks like the, the it looks like this, but of course it's Chanel and it has like a very uh, brownish, sparkly, transparent sort of gel. It's meant to be used under foundation, but you can also use it as foundation because it has that, that little illuminating kind of lights and, and it kind of stretches your skin a little bit. So it kind of 
you know, makes it super nice. And I hear a lot of YouTubers is their favorite. I did not like it. Uh, it's not like it's horrible. It's okay. But to me, I, it stretches thing. I thought it in fact, and fat the size, a little bit of texture, not texture, but little wrinkles that you never see, but with that you saw. It just makes my skin drier. Again, everything that makes my skin drier for normal to oily, they appreciate it, they like it. They they say, oh, it, it worked. Uh, it, it reminds me of the Victoria Beckham, the illuminating primer that I'm using right now, that there's a lot of people that love it. And I think it's more normal to, to to oily then because it, it kind of stretches a little bit and it mattifies a little or blurs a little bit. So uh, that one does that. It's kind of transparent with sparkles and it stretches a little bit. To me, no thank you. In fact, size everything that I don't want to be emphasized. Now the, I have here another one. This is the LeVay's Chanel. This is supposed to be Cheer Healthy Glow Moisturizing Tint. Ooh, I haven't even gone into the moisturizing tints. Should I do it now or let me finish with what I'm doing? Nah, let me do it. Let me finish with what I'm doing and I'll mention moisturizing tints. Uh, maybe in a different video because this is getting too long. I'll include them and my thoughts on it. Oops. All right. So we're, we're, I'm going to speed it up here. We're almost done. The one I did enjoy from Chanel is obviously not enough for me to purchase and have. Maybe if I buy it now, my experience will be different, but I did try it out for a while. And that one is a Chanel uh, Vita Lumiere Aqua, ultra light skin perfecting sunscreen makeup with SPF 15. That one was nice. It is casual, it is skin-like, it is nice. So I would be willing to try it again. And uh, it was not a medium coverage or a formal event or anything like that. It would be a little bit in between casual and semi-formal in the two categories that I think. So it, yeah, but I still would prefer the ones I told you, right? The, the Lisa Edrich, the Forever Makeup, you know, I would still go more on on those all right uh what other one oh I, the other one i wanted to to mention is the i did try the Ilia foundation very glowy i think it will get oily on me so i did not like even though it's supposed to be clean and natural beauty uh the other one i did try was the uh the bobby brown the bobby brown has a serum foundation it comes in a black bottle um, and it's very liquidy and yeah, I put it on and your skin does look more moisturized and, and radiant and nice and skin, but it feels like you're wearing a top coat all over. So I think even people can tell, so it doesn't look skin like it looks like you have something on. Yeah. Your skin looks beautiful, but it has that look that I mentioned that I'm not big on where you look like you have a full makeup, even though not a formal makeup, like high coverage but still you look like you have a nice makeup so if you like that sort of look that one is pretty good now it's supposed to be moisturizing and it's a serum like so it has qualities for your skincare i find that those believe it or not even though they advertise it like that end up over time drying my skin so who knows but uh, that that's what i think uh another one that i should mention real quick because i think i'm gonna do the tint and moisturizer in a different video. Um, so I did try the Surad. This is not the Drew Drop Foundation. This is the um, Skin Foundation Wand. Uh, and you can see the video where I apply this. I don't like it. I'm going to be retiring it. Um, it just, I find that it makes me look like Cruella. <laughs> I say Cruella when everything just starts wrinkling up. I think the Chanel um, Sublimage Le Tint sort of does that a little bit too. All right, I said it. Those, these two are good brands and I use a lot of their products, but those are not uh, awesome. But I do want to mention this other one. So this one is the Capture Total Dior Serum Foundation or Serotint. 
Um, they reformulated this. They have a new bottle and a new everything. Still have this old one. Um, and the reason I keep this, I obviously like it. I bought it. I still prefer the forever. But the reason I use it is because sometimes I use this for my skin. Like if I have something I want to cover here or cover here, I would use that for my skin since it's a serum tint and da da da. It has higher coverage. And so I do feel it. It's more like the Bobbi Brown serum that I tell you when you put it on, you, you, you kind of feel it. But when I'm covering something here, you really couldn't see it. Um, so that's why I keep it. I, I don't think I would use this in my face anymore, other than also it's old. It doesn't smell bad or anything. So I still use it for that purpose. But um, I, I would try the new one, the new formulation. It's not inexpensive. It's also in the hires. So it's supposed to be very good. But um, um, but yeah, I haven't tried the new formula. But this one was nice. It just has that I can feel like an extra layer of skin in my skin. And I don't like that. Oh, and with that, I should definitely mention the uh, Dior spray, what do you call that? I will list it down below, but for super formal. Yeah, that's the one I had. I don't have it with me right now, but that's what I would use. The air spray uh, that you spray it on the, on the brush and then you apply it for formal events. Oh, I mean, I guess you could use it for semi-formal or for, you know, um, I wouldn't, I obviously don't. I don't, I don't own it at this moment, but I have owned it. Your skin looks beautiful. So you have a special event, that one, the Dior Air Flush. I'll, I'll, I'll write it down below for sure. All right, uh, so tinted moisturizers we'll do in a different video. I hope this was useful. Um, did I mention like, uh, what was for it? Radiant Glow, I did the NARS um, and, you know, Tone 4 and the Claire de Paul. Um, yeah, I didn't mention, for example, this one, the Jar Wise. Um, this one is very similar to the Westman Atelier, but it has a little more coverage. Uh, so when I bought this, I usually just use it mostly like for concealing or for spot treating. Um, but I do have a video, if you look at it, I'll list it below, where uh, I do use it as a foundation and it was very nice. It was very nice. It's a little heavier than Westman Atelier, so I prefer the Westman Atelier. Uh, but um, this one is comfortable on the skin and it looks great. I also tried the the Jane Iredell for you that are mineral powder, you know, aficionados or, or you prefer it. It looks very nice. To me, the mineral powders, believe it or not, it starts clogging my pores. So I start feeling um, a little crowded after a a while of using it. I like the way it looks. I like uh, sort of the way it feels. I can't forget I have it on. I do feel it throughout the day. So that bothers me a little bit, but I like how it looks. And so, you know, there's that. Uh, so no, I'm simple. I gave you my preferences uh, in that extent. I hope I'm not forgetting any. And if I do, I guess I'll do an extra video this one was long enough i hope you enjoyed please ask me any questions and please suggest comment what's your experience with all the ones that i mentioned probably you have a completely different experience so let me know it's good to know oh the last honoring that i have to mention is the armani fabric illuminating foundation i did a video on, on it trying it on i want to mention it's not my favorite i wouldn't buy it but I have seen people more normal to, I mean, dry, but acne prone. So a little more normal combined sort of thing. Um, that one looks beautiful, silk foundation, like in fabric. Yeah, it, it, it sort of does. So I, I will mention it before the name of it. So I do recommend that one. It just doesn't work for me. And I do have a video with it so you can judge. Oh, and last, ding, 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 ding. Remember that I have half of my face with one foundation and half with the other. And now I've been talking forever and I did the other video. So it's been like two hours. Um, so what do you think? All right, I'll let you know. This side, I have La Mer, which is what I recommended for more formal event. And this side, I have 
the Drew Dup Foundation Surat, this one. A little cooler tone, but this is my casual, semi-casual, semi-formal, you know. I'm gonna confuse with all this. I said everyday, casual, semi-formal, formal, super formal. So the semi-formal is a social event. Um, so I would put this for an everyday formal event. And then this, if it was night, or I will be presenting, or I want it to look a little more formal. Does it matter? Does it make a difference to you? This one in the cooler, I think is more daylight. This one, uh, remember the color, and I talk about this in the video where I try them, it makes a big difference. This is warmer and yellowish, this is cooler. But if you look at just the texture of it, does this blur more? Is this is a little bit more skin-like, in my opinion? Um, and I didn't set it. So if it would be even more formal, uh, this will look a little different because it will have a lot more makeup on, meaning uh, probably a more significant eye color and blush and all of these things. So I think we said enough. I said enough. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do at this moment. Ring the bell on the right hand corner and I guess I'll see you next time. Thank you.